All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another weekly analysis video. It's been a little while since I've gotten back to doing one of these, so figured what a better time than now as we're seeing some really interesting setups coming into uh, a couple important weeks in the market here. So as always, going to try and keep this video short and sweet, going to pack as much information as possible into a relatively short amount of time. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's just get right into it. So first things first, we're going to take a look at SPY here, obviously one of the most important names uh, being one of the most significant indices, the S&P 500. So we're going to start by taking a look here. Um, most importantly, we're sitting in a relatively clear uptrend here in the short term, right? We have multiple higher lows ever since mid-October, and ever since then, we haven't seen any fresh lows on the weekly chart. So very important to keep that in mind. Also important to note that we actually haven't seen a fresh higher high on the weekly. Uh, however, we definitely have seen that on the daily time frame. So important to keep that distinction there. Um, but yeah, most importantly, looking towards this 405 uh, to 406 area, this is actually the monthly point of control and the previous week's low. So not last week, but last last week's low. Uh, and this level is kind of our short term higher low. So this is really going to be the place where we need to see bulls step in and defend. And we'll take a look at that level a little bit more carefully on the daily chart. Other thing to note is we are now above the second weekly trend line. So I know most people were looking at this trend line, something like that uh, in the past. Now it had looked like we had established a new trend uh, with these three top wicks here. So I redrew it a bit, you know, not always recommended to redraw trends, but when I think it makes more sense, I will redraw that trend. Uh, and in this case, we're also above that trend now as well. So just another tailwind for the bull thesis. Uh, also important to take a look at the moving averages here, uh, just to let you guys know which is which. Oops, didn't zoom in there. The yellow moving average is the 20 uh, weekly moving average. The orange is the 50 and the red is the 200. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago in one of my posts, but every time we see um, this 20, 50 and 200 stack to the upside, such as this uh, after coming out of a bear market low, we typically, and I shouldn't say typically, we actually have never seen any new bear market lows over the past 20 years. Um, and this typically signal leads to upwards of 100% upside. Now, again, I'm not here trying to say that the low is in. I'm not here trying to say that we're going to see 100% upside from here. However, that's just what's happened in the past, and it's important to keep the history in mind as we're looking to prepare for the future. Uh, so with that being said, that's really what I'm looking toward for sentiment-wise on the weekly. Next main target to the upside is going to be 418. And again, this isn't something that we should be looking to trade, you know, intraday from 405 to 418. It's not going to work like that. This is a weekly setup. So this isn't something that you can, you know, trade based off a five minute candle. So very important to make that distinction as well. Uh, and really my ultimate target on this week is going to be this gap here, which is on the weekly and the daily, which is around this 420 to 422 area. And this is a gap that's been open for almost a year now, just a couple of months shy of a year here. Uh, and just really interesting gap down. Um, I mean, after this gap, we saw something like a 20% sell lower. So going to be a significant area to fill. As we know, not all gaps filled, but most do. And this is definitely one that I would expect to see act as a magnet here in the short term. Uh, again, just to summarize, really staying bullish over 406 area. Haven't had a reason to be bearish uh, in a long time. So just to take a quick look at the daily here now. Uh, again, really similar concept here. All of our moving averages have now crossed to the upside. Again, 20 is stacked with a 50 above the 200. We're sitting above some key levels here. Really another level to watch in the short term is this 411. If we take a look at the volume profile, it'll be a little bit more clear as to why that one uh, is a bit more important. So you can see that 411 level is one of the larger zones or pockets of liquidity. Um, so above this, we get that drop down in liquidity, which should represent a lack of resistance above. Uh, and again, right, we have this 402. 410 really to 411 zone parked right below, which again is going to act as another tailwind for buyers in the short term. Important to note that we also on, I believe this was Thursday or excuse me, Wednesday, had this bearish outside day, which fully engulfed the previous day. Following day, we had an extremely bullish candle with a bull bar closing near its high on equal volume. This is a very bullish setup for me. And we saw the results of that a little bit in intraday on Friday. Uh, and ultimately that dip was bought. Um, so this is something that I'm still looking for more upside into this week. Important to note that we also have tech earnings coming up in soon, which obviously could throw a wrench in a lot of setups, but typically we see some uh, repositioning towards buying the buy side into tech earnings. It's also a pretty seasonal bullish month being April. You got tax returns coming out, that type of stuff. So all in all, 
still feeling bullish on the SPY. I haven't really wavered in that sentiment for the past couple of months now. Uh, and that's been working out pretty nicely for me. Uh, obviously, that sentiment is based off of what the chart is telling me. It's not based off of something I'm imagining or my opinion, or it, this is literally what the chart is telling me is to be bullish, right? We got sequential higher lows. We're making it above key levels. All the moving averages are stacked to the upside. We got all of our timeframes point of control sitting below. So all of these are tailwinds for bulls, right? So I'm strictly forming my opinion off of what the chart is telling me, right? I'm not just saying, oh, I think it's going to go up. And it's, no, I have plenty of reasons to be feeling this way. So that's really summarizing, summarizing my point of view there on SPY. Let's take a look at QQQ here. and just going to zoom out to the weekly once again to start it off. Uh, QQQ is looking a little bit more interesting than SPY actually uh, with almost a more construct constructive, excuse me, setup with a double inside week here above this previous breakout level. Um, so typically you'll see uh, these breakout levels kind of act as support after previously acting as resistance. So we saw resistance at this level here, here, and here. And now we're seeing this level act as support. We're also seeing an increased amount of buyers step in at this level. Uh, and again, with a double inside week. So really just sitting in a range so far from about this 312.50 up to this 322 area. Um, but really above or below this range is when we should expect a significant move in either direction. Um, above this 321 area, I'm really looking at that 330. If you take a look at the profile here, totally tapers off above this 321.50 area. Um, and again, right, this 312.50 area is also the monthly point of control. I know you can't quite see the text in there. There you go. Uh, that's also the monthly point of control. So again, just another tailwind of bulls there. Uh, so a cluster of levels here sitting right at this weekly breakout level. So multiple reasons to be bullish here. If we come back down and give this level a visit, this is somewhere I'd be looking to be a buyer. Uh, if we are able to come back into this area in the short term and definitely would be more cautious on longs as we approach this range high. However, if we are able to make it above, which um, from this volume, it's definitely looking like we're at least giving this level a test again this week, this 321.60 area. If we are able to make it above this level, I'd be looking towards a 330 here on the weekly. Uh, let's take a quick look at the daily chart as well going to be kind of a similar concept here as SPY. Uh, again, right, just a constructive, excuse me, constructive setup to the upside, a cluster of levels acting as a tailwind for bulls below. Uh, and again, there's so many levels stacked on top of each other, you can't even see them. But we got the 20 moving average, that weekly breakout level and zone sitting right below as well as the monthly point of control. Um, you could call this some kind of bull flag, I personally won't. But you know, you could call that a bull flag, I prefer not to attach sentiment to it, because really, it's only a bull flag when it breaks out. Um, but let's just take a look at the moving averages really quick just to kind of see what those are looking like. Uh, so the 20 acting as support in the short term, we got a huge gap between the 2050 and 200 indicating a super strong trend in the short term. Important to note that some of the market internals, including the net new highs and new lows are definitely weaker um, than this rally uh, back in January. So definitely important to kind of be cautious based on breadth. I mean, I think everybody has known that really it's been kind of NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, and really those names running the rallies. Uh, I mean, you can just see it in the charts and we're starting to see some catching up out of those Amazon and Googles. Um, but for the most part, it's really been those names just kind of carrying and, and I guess the Microsoft as well. So important to keep that in mind. Breath still hasn't been that strong in this rally. So it's really something that we're going to want to see a push out of if we are able to get this break higher in order to feel confident and comfortable uh, continuing to press the pedal on that long side exposure. So for the most part, again, just still feeling more bullish than bearish. You got to be here as we consolidate above this previous breakout level. I mean, really just nice buying volume keeping us above this level, a lot of cluster of levels sitting right below. So multiple reasons to be bullish for me here. Um, and yeah, one other thing to note is we do have some distance between all the moving averages on the weekly. If we are able to give this breakout level up and break below, I would definitely be looking to buy this cluster of levels down closer to our weekly point of control if we are able to get any significant dip. Uh, and I mean, I'm not saying that's gonna happen this week, next week or the following week. However, if we see that in the next couple months, that would be a dip that I would absolutely be participating in because at this point we have sequential higher lows, a bunch of key levels stacked relatively far below. I mean, 20 points below, what is that? Yeah, somewhere around 10% below us. However, if we are able to get that 10% pullback, I would be looking to be a buyer at these levels. But again, that's not something that I'm paying attention to for the week, something more longer term. With that being said, let's start taking a look at some of the individual names. So just to briefly review Apple really quick, just been on a rip recently. Uh, let's just zoom out to the weekly real quick, just to kind of show what this is looking like. Uh, just a couple bucks off the all-time highs. I mean, almost 17 bucks now till it makes it to the all-time highs. Looking relatively similar to QQQ here, just kind of consolidating 
um, sitting in a relatively tight range, really about six bucks now. Uh, based on this week, we got increasing buyer volume. You got earnings coming up soon. And just this 166, this previous week's high, uh, or excuse me, 167 is going to be that level to beat. Um, Apple is just always one to keep in mind as you're looking for sentiment in the market or just momentum out of tech. You really got to see Apple lead that move higher. Uh, and so far, that's exactly what Apple's done over the past really couple months is, is leading that move out of tech higher. So going to be another one to keep in mind always have some levels parked on apple and just be watching that one as you're day trading especially qqq throughout the day i'm not going to spend too much time there though i want to keep rolling throughout these names so let's take a look at amd uh, amd definitely uh experienced a relatively significant pullback about 10 percent off of these swing highs at 102.40 but it's looking like a constructive pullback and i want to just talk about a couple of reasons why um you know first and foremost you could definitely call this pattern some type of falling wedge that i have drawn out here um you got a lot of overhead supply which is a little bit of a red flag however if we are able to get some entries closer to this long-term uptrend in this 89 level which was that previous breakout level uh, i would definitely be more intrigued in taking a buy there um, so again really that 88 well, I guess 88, 90 levels I have it marked, we'll call that 89 to 90 zone, uh, is really somewhere where I'd be interested in participating as a buyer. So I'll just draw that zone out so we can have it all there for reference. Uh, again, we got that uptrend um, from the swing lows in the beginning of the year, really. Uh, and also this falling wedge here. If we take a look at some of the moving averages, we've broken below uh, the 20 daily, which is significant. However, you know, nothing to be too concerned about. Still just a relatively normal pullback. Um, again, right, this is a name that's really up 100% off of the lows. So it's definitely completely expected and normal to see pullbacks here and there. It's actually great. Uh, gives a chance for new buyers to participate. So definitely very interested in getting long at AMD somewhere around this 89 to 90 area. Uh, it's had a little bit of a deeper pullback than Nvidia, but still not something of concern and specific to me. Again, just a constructive looking chart so far. You could, I mean, honestly, I didn't even really see this when I was reviewing this earlier, but you could almost call this some kind of a cup and handle as well. Definitely not textbook. However, conceptually speaking, uh, that's kind of the idea I'm seeing there. And then also we're seeing this flag or wedge form on decrease, decreasing volume, which kind of removes the distribution case for me there. Uh, so again, just a constructive looking setup here. Um, interested in see that 88, uh, 90 to 90 buck level uh, turn as support, uh, which we've started to see some buyers kind of front run that level just a bit uh, over the past couple of days. Uh, and I'm looking for that to hold into the week and be a buyer there. This is one that I'd be a little bit more cautious taking a breakout buy on. But if I was going to take that breakout, it would probably be above today's high or excuse me, Friday's high around that 93 buck level. But again, it's one that I'd prefer to get at this support personally. It would make the trade a bit easier for me. Uh, next, I want to take a quick look at Google. Uh, again, just finally making it out of the shed here. Um, you know, it's really had a lot of trouble over the past couple of months. And finally, it's starting to get some momentum here. You got earnings coming up in a couple of weeks and really just the perfect entry uh, at 109 here. It's, I mean, it's a very clear level to be watching out for. You got two incredibly bullish bars here coming up into this level, right? Two candles closing near their highs with absolutely no wicks really not something that you see incredibly often just indicates the strength of buyers and complete lack of sellers at this point in time uh, you got some sellers that are trapped below this monthly point of control here and again just to note that monthly point of control around 106 is going to be my key level for sentiment again now that we're above those point of controls that's going to act as a tailwind for bulls it's a huge level to be above again it's a monthly level uh, and you really want to see that kind of act as a key pivot which it absolutely has over the past few weeks. Uh, we got a couple of fake outs below, which should have trapped some short-sided traders, which ultimately looks like that they have been trapped as we see this kind of move higher, uh, kind of squeeze type move, where we see these candles closing near their highs, every gap down is bought, that type of stuff. Um, but really watching this 109 area above that i'd be looking for a quick move up to 111s uh, and we zoom back out to the weekly here you can kind of see where these levels are coming from a little better excuse me a little better uh, so that 109 is that previous week's high 111 is that pivot or 111.50 is that pivot before we got that key sell down uh, and then 115 area kind of brings us into the center of this range. You can see how we've kind of reacted off of this area. Not exactly perfectly, but we got a nice shelf sticking out from that 115 area as well. So these are the levels that I'm looking for. Again, Google, just another upside trade that I'm looking for. Um, not something that I want to be short on at this point in time. It's holding on this weekly volume gap, which again is a great sign for me. Typically looking for a lack of liquidity in these volume gaps, which contribute to an easy uh, or should I say low resistance move in the direction of the current trend, which right now the trend is up. So looking for this trend to continue higher above 109. It's absolutely one that I will be participating in as well.
Uh, a couple more names that I want to just roll through real quick. Uh, take a look at Coca-Cola here. Uh, it's a name that not many people really trade, at least in our community. However, so many more should be trading as it moves, I mean, really incredibly. Um, I'm watching this as it comes up on this day, or excuse me, weekly trend line here. Um, obviously, a lack of resistance above this level, as we can see based on the volume profile. Um, but I'm looking in the short term on the daily here for a push out of this inside day range. So you can see we kind of have this inside day. I'll zoom in a bit more so you can see it a little more clearly here. Um, so yeah, really just textbook inside day here. We got this doji style candlestick sitting perfectly within this previous candles range. This is statistically a uh, high probability, well not high probability, but the probabilities are in the favor of bulls here for more upside. Uh, so really looking above this 6320 area up to this trend. Uh, and you know, it might sound like a small move, but that's really half a percent, which definitely works out pretty nicely for, uh, you know, weekly next week options trade. Um, so I'd be looking to take a trim off of that trend. And then above that, I'd be looking to take the next sell right around the 6370 area, this prior pivot before the sell down. And ultimately, really my current top target is around the 6460s. Um, but this is a pretty wide target for Coke. This isn't something that's really going to happen in a day. Uh, but again, another name earnings coming soon. Typically, typical to see some buying coming into that earnings. Uh, we're sitting right in the middle of a huge volume shelf, which should act as support if we're able to make it above there. That's kind of why I'm interested in that 6320 area because you know this level is so key, as well as this inside day setup here. Um, so yeah, just another name to be watching on your radar for further upside. Again, not something that most people typically trade. However, it's so cheap and it moves so slowly for the most part that it can be kind of easy sometimes. So Coke, another one to keep in mind. Um, I want to just review one or two more names here. So I want to take a quick look at Pinterest. Uh, this is a name that I've been watching kind of for months to really do something exciting. And it really hasn't. I mean, the tape has just been so terrible over these past few, I mean, really, it's almost been a year where you see kind of every bar reversing itself. And, and I mean, this is just a complete barcode, but the tape definitely is starting to clean up a bit here where we're starting to see some moves hold. We're starting to see some buying volume stick uh, and actually able to do something here. Uh, and this is another one, earnings coming up soon, like most names in the market here. Uh, got a couple tailwinds going on with those TikTok bans and kind of a sympathy play to that type of stuff. Um, but it's looking like it's finally able to hold outside of this 28 buck range. And this is um, kind of a concept that we've talked about a little while um, or a little earlier where we talked about that whole stage one base idea, uh, which this is one that's absolutely forming that type of base uh, and coming out of it. It's near the right side of the base. Um, definitely not on the amount of volume that I would like to see just yet. However, important to note, we're making it outside of this base. It's something that's starting to catch some buying volume. The trend is definitely shifting to the upside. We got the 20 or excuse me, 50 weekly fully flat and starting to curl up to the upside. 20 nicely sloped upside and the 200 just sitting way above as it just was formed recently. But again, just another cheaper setup, something to watch out for. Um, it's been a tougher one to trade just because of the choppiness. However, it's starting to seem like it's cleaning up just a bit as we make it above this range high uh, and really watching for a move above this 29 area. That's going to be where I'm most confident in participating in any moves higher. In the short term, it's just still going to be relatively difficult, but this is a name that you should absolutely have some kind of alert set and just be watching and waiting uh, for any kind of move above this 29 buck level as it's got a lot of room. I mean, really up to this 32.50 here on the weekly significant lack of liquidity in that area. So something to keep in mind, just another setup uh, to kind of have on the back burner there. Last thing I want to talk about is Meta. Uh, and this one's been just absolutely nuts over the past few months, really, has just been going straight up. Uh, and this really reminds me a lot of NVIDIA, uh, where it's a name that people, well, so far people haven't really been looking to short this, at least that I've seen. Um, and this is a name that's just been grinding higher. Um, I drew this trend a really long time ago, and I did not think we'd be making it there. And ultimately, uh, clearly, we're above it at this point in time, and we're just above it on some increasing volume there. Uh, so it's one that I'm going to want to be paying attention to for further upside this week. Uh, ideally, we get some kind of retest of this trend into the next week. I see we got kind of, you know, obviously, we got some significant buyers off of it as we gapped above it. Um, but really important to just kind of watch this uptrend. Uh, whoever you want to draw it, that might be one way to draw it. But ideally, we get some kind of flagging price action or some kind of consolidation where we're able to structure some kind of buy off of that. Because obviously, over the significant overextension that we've had, it's a little bit harder 
um, to be a buyer at some support. You really got to be a breakout trader to continue to ride this trend, which is fine. You know, obviously something that we can make work intraday. Um, but for a swing trade, I'd be looking to see uh, some retests of some support, maybe back down to this 216 area. Um, but ideally, we don't want to see any new lows created. So, I mean, you could even draw the trend kind of like that and just follow that shorter term uh, kind of bump and run style trend there. But just another name to be watching out for, for momentum into the week. Uh, again, not something that is at the top of my watch list, but something that I'm just keeping uh, tabs on, right? Obviously, when it exhibits the relative strength that it has, you got to just continue watching it and uh, look for it to exhibit relative strength on days when nothing else is. So for the most part, that is the wrap of my weekly review. Uh, we'll finalize it by just taking a quick look at ES here. Uh, going to be kind of a similar concept to SPY. Um, these are just a couple more levels that I want to throw out there that I've been liking a lot. Um, again, this is going to be the same 406 area on SPY, except this is 4096 here on ES. This is really my line in the sand. As long as we're able to hold above this 4096, I really don't see a reason to be a bear. I really don't, unless we kind of move higher to these key levels, uh, maybe this 4200, maybe you can take a short there. Um, but for the most part, shorter term, I don't see a reason to be bearish above this 4096. We crack that. The gates are open, you know, the floodgates are open to sell, I should say. Uh, and that's something that I would participate in. However, in the short term, really not seeing a reason to be short again. Uh, and looking mainly towards this zone, this high volume node, and I'll zoom in on the hourly so we can see the zone a bit better. Um, this high volume node has acted as a pretty key pivot in the short term, right? You'll notice how we bounced off of that. Uh, coming into Friday um, and just been a pretty interesting area to be watching for reactions to, right? We've seen some sells there, sells at the top, buys off the top, et cetera. Uh, so let that pivot act as your sentiment indicator, at least for day trading, right? If we're above that pivot, you want to be looking for longs more than shorts. And if we're below that, you want to be looking short more than long. With that being said, that's going to wrap up my analysis for the week. I'm not exactly sure how long I went on this one, but hopefully it's not too long. Uh, and if you guys have any questions, comments, or ways that we can improve this uh, type of video or things that you want to see in the future, please feel free to send me a message. Let me know on the trade floor. Um, but regardless, that's going to be the end of it for me for the week. And I will see you all in the chat. Adios.